coming up, OU Knightley. Country music superstar and Oklahoma legend announced as guest picker for Saturday's college game day. What to expect ahead. And a power outage early this morning at all campus dorms impacts thousands of students. Find out what happened. Plus, hear how the Kamala Harris campaign is attempting to connect with younger voters. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching the Unitely. I'm Abigail Franklin. And I'm Brooke Griggs. We begin tonight with developing news here on campus. College Game Day is making its return to Norman for the first time since 2020, where the Sooners hosted Bedlam. It's looking a little different here on the South Oval this Thursday. That's because the ESPN College Game Day set has already been rolled out for Saturday's show. OU has made, the, has made the fourth most appearances ever on the show and its own fourth best winning percentage with game day there. But Norman turns into God's country this weekend because Blake Shelton will be the guest picker for game day. Shelton is a native of Oklahoma, so we'll see if he's feeling Sooner Magic on this Saturday. Another special guest is going to appear today as well. This guest also doubles as a furry friend. Ben Herbstreit, Kirk's famous golden retriever, will be here. Here's his all-access pass Kirk shared on social media with Ben's title as Goodest Boy. All right, well, we're taking a look at the weather across the area. Today, we're seeing a lot of those temperatures over there. It's been a pretty hot day. And OU Nightly's meteorologist, Willie Gillespie, is live in studio with the first check of the weather. Willie, what do you have for us? Yeah, that's right. The heat has been the biggest thing out there at 430 and we'll show you some of these current temperatures 98 in Oklahoma City. The record was 98. They went up to 99 just a few minutes ago, so we've beaten the record at Oklahoma City here at the National Weather Center in Norman. The record is 90, 100 degrees, so we'll see if we get there. We got a little bit of time. Feels like temperatures low 100s. It's cooler out in Elk City where they've gotten rain, so the rain cooled there. Downdraft has cooled things down to 77 out there, but for the most of the area, we are in the lower 100s. We'll tell you about the game day forecast and some relief on the way in just a couple minutes. In Oklahoma, or thanks, Willie. An Oklahoma school district ramps up security after a picture circulates online showing a group of students with a racial slur spelled out across their chests. Tishomingo Public Schools superintendent released a statement this morning saying, quote, Racism and discrimination in any form will never be tolerated or accepted on our campus and is not reflective of the values of our students, school, and community. School security is being enhanced and all threats made are being reported to local law enforcement. National politics are taking a toll on Springfield, Ohio. After the presidential debate, bomb threats have left the community in fear. CNN's Lori Aguirre, Aguirre has the latest. A lot of stress. There are more bomb threats uh, unfolding right now. Community and city leaders in Springfield, Ohio, bracing for yet another day in a political firestorm. Our goal is to get back to normal. A goal that may have to wait as the rhetoric and misinformation targeting Haitian immigrants in that city intensifies. They came in illegally. They're destroying our country. Well, if Kamala Harris waves the wand illegally and says these people are now here legally, I'm still going to call them an illegal alien. Springfield officials say most of their Haitian residents have temporary protected status or TPS, which allows them to receive city services while they await employment approval. TPS is a legal process. Um, these folks have legal status. This outside stuff since the debate has just been awful. They're eating the dogs. Widely discredited rumors that could get worse in the days ahead. I'm going to go there in the next two weeks. If either one of the candidates decide, wanted to come to Springfield, it would be very, very difficult to have them here. So difficult that Mayor Rob Rue on Thursday issued a proclamation granting him temporary emergency powers to more quickly mobilize resources against any risks like civil unrest, cyber threats, and other violence. The people that came in, they're eating the cats. Just wish he would, out of the goodness of his heart, just acknowledge that he was misinformed and ask the uh, groups that are here uh, for hateful reasons to leave our city. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. Lawmakers are planning to visit Springfield next week to offer support and to visit with members of the Haitian community. 
Tensions continue to rise between Israel and the Iranian-backed group Hezbollah. OU Nightly's Olivia Hayes has that and the rest of today's national and international headlines from the News Center. Abigail Brooke, the Israeli military, says it struck dozens of Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon today. Israel's Air Force hit 30 launchers and, quote, terrorist infrastructure sites containing more than 100 launcher barrels. Israel says the aerial attack also hit a weapons storage facility. The strikes follow a vow made by Israel's defense minister that military action against Hezbollah in Lebanon will continue. Meanwhile, Hezbollah leaders launched their own attacks on several military sites in northern Israel today. This all comes after Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah hinted at retaliation against Israel for the deadly pager and walkie-talkie explosions targeting Hezbollah members earlier this week. Nasrallah calling the attacks a, quote, major blow and unprecedented. Additionally, he warned Israel that the Lebanese front will not stop until hostilities end in Gaza. And back here in the States, Kentucky police say the search is over for the man believed to have shot, have shot five people along Highway I-75. Authorities confirm the man's body was found not today not far from the shooting site, ending an 11-day search. Reports say two, two troopers along with two people found the remains. Investigators say the gunman's motive is still unclear. And some Amazon employees are saying goodbye to their four-day weekends. The company says it will soon require its corporate employees to come into the office five days a week instead of three. Abigail, Brooklyn. Thanks, Olivia. With the presidential race well on its way, presidential candidates are bringing first to campaigns. Gaylord News reporter Victoria Anderson takes a look at how the, the Kamala Harris campaign is appealing to young audiences. Name calling is nothing new in this era of American politics, but names like Brad and Midwestern Princess are definitely a first. Now, the Harris Waltz campaign's peek into pop culture may be confusing for some voters, but Gen Z says their marketing feels right at home on their For You page. I think Brad is. I'd say revolutionary. The campaign marketing page Kamala HQ has been filling feeds since the vice president's rise on the presidential ticket. The pages stretch across TikTok, X, and Instagram with around 6 million followers combined. But what are they talking about? What is Brad and why are we calling the Vice President of the United States that? Let's break this down. Now, Brat is an album by pop star Charlie XCX. This album took over social media this summer and people named it Brat Summer. Now, what does Brat mean? Brat means you're the it girl. Brat means you're cool. So Kamala headquarters jumped on this trend, rebranding their page with the album's signature lime green background and font. Hence, Kamala is Brat. Now, Governor Waltz, he's Midwestern Princess, a term now making the campaign millions of dollars off of these hats. This is in reference to another album by artist Chapel Roan called The Rise and Fall of a Midwestern Princess. This is reference to Governor Waltz's Midwest roots. Now, to simplify all of this, all of these things just reflect back to the campaign's main motif of joy. The New York Times said that joy is not a strategy, <laughs> and I think they're wrong. I think it's a fantastic strategy. Uh, people want to be happy. Polls from the New York Times show Gen Z interest has skyrocketed since July, even in Oklahoma. Uh, Kamala being brat, uh, Tim Walls being a Midwestern princess, like this is a crazy uh, summer for young people. But with only months left until Election Day, the Harris Waltz campaign is working hard to turn brat summer into brat presidency. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Victoria Anderson, Gaylord News. Kamala Harris will join Oprah Winfrey this evening for a live stream event at 7 p.m. All right, well, still ahead, flu season is around the corner and OU Health Services is gearing up for the months ahead. That's right, find out what services they will have for free right here on campus. Plus, a major update on injury reports. Find out who you'll be seeing back on the field this Saturday, just in time for OU's SEC debut after the break. The season is just around the corner and maybe time to get your flu shot. OU Nightly Savannah Simmons has more on the opportunities campus has to get your flu vaccine in this week's Health Beat. Yes, ladies, many people are reporting to be sick right now and viruses have spread across campus. Yesterday, I attended OU Health Services free flu shot clinic on campus where I met with Goddard Health's clinic administrative director on why you should get your flu shot.
Are you kidding? The signs are here. Flu season is approaching. That's why OU Health Services is offering free flu shot clinics on campus to prevent students from getting sick. We're hoping to administer as many flu shots as we can. We're not going to run out, so we encourage everybody to come out. Students, staff, and faculty are able to stop by the clinic to receive their flu vaccine with or without insurance. So for students, if you have insurance, please bring your card. But if you don't have insurance or you're underinsured, your insurance doesn't cover the flu vaccine, it's still no cost for the students. Goddard Health's Clinical Administrative Director Maggie Poole says in the past month, many students have been reporting they are sick and that this clinic is just one more step in keeping campus healthy. Students have been sick right now. Some students are reporting they've been sick for over a month. And the flu shot is actually an inactivated vaccine, so you can't get the flu from the flu shot. The next clinic is Friday at the OU Armory from 10 to 4. So my goal is to give at least 1,000 flu shots per clinic, so we'd love to have 2,000 people come out. Now, if you miss the free clinic tomorrow, you can contact Goddard to set up a time for a flu shot. Shots are also available through your doctor and at most major pharmacies in Norman, as well as the county health department. In the studio, Savannah Simmons, OU Nightly. Thanks, Savannah. Coming up, students in dorms on campus received an interesting wake up call last night. The events of what happens when we return. Put off a little Sooner Magic here, but I'm back here in the weather office from that record heat that we're experiencing outside. So as we can see here on campus, as we have with this weather, we have these record high temperatures across campus. And as we can see with temperatures right now, we're in the upper 90s and the record high for Norman is around 100. So we're really approaching that record high. And as we go for across the state, our current temperatures were up there, 99 degrees here in Norman, 99 in Oklahoma City, 102 up there in Enid. So we're record high temperatures for here and across Oklahoma. As we go for the allergy report, we got these high allergies outside too. We got very high reed allergies and high tree and mold allergies as you're outside. And as we go with the... So we got with this record heat, we also have severe weather potential for northeastern Oklahoma, whereas we have a marginal risk from the Oklahoma City Metro through the Tulsa Metro up there into Kansas, southern Kansas with a slight risk there. But that's because of these record temperatures we're experiencing here. And now as you look with this future cast, we see these storms are starting to fire up around 5 p.m. and coming across and starting to approach the metro, but then winding down and dying off around 9 p.m. and then clearing out as we go through the evening and going whampering out. But as we go into tomorrow, the record heat is still remaining as we are at 98 degrees here in Norman, 98 in Oklahoma City, and we're really approaching another record high temperature as the record in Oklahoma City was around 100 degrees in 1954, so we're approaching that record high temperature. And across the state, we got over 100 in Enid and Woodward. Now for that as we look ahead for that game day on Saturday, that early morning hours before that game day show, if you're out and about on campus, we've got those temperatures in the low 70s, mid 70s, around 6 a.m., and then we're going to be warming up into the 80s by the end of that college game day. And as we get ready for that, our SEC, first SEC matchup against Tennessee, we're going to be starting off at 96 degrees to for tailgate time around 4 p.m., 93 at kickoff, and then cooling down to the high 80s as we go into halftime there. So it's going to be a hot one tomorrow. Make sure to bring lots of water for that game day on Saturday. Now as you go for the seven-day forecast, we've got that matchup with Tennessee coming up on Saturday, and we're going to be cooling off into the 80s next week with that cold front on, coming in Sunday and even in those 70s. So we're going to get that fall-like weather with fall co coming around on Sunday. So as we go into the weekend, it's going to be record hot, but we're going to get that fall-like temperature as we go into next week. Hey, I'm excited. Love some cool weather. Today was just so, so warm. I just needed that cool weather to come in. And hey, I'm excited for fall to start happening. Me too. I've been waiting for sweater weather. It has been a long summer. Well, thank you, Sammy. Students on campus were without power for just less than an hour last night. 
According to OU Marketing and Communications, just before 1.30 this morning, a substation issue caused campus buildings south of Lindsay Street to lose power. OU facilities addressed the issue and restored power in under an hour to all housing areas. Well, Darby, we talked about what's going on in the South over earlier, you know, with ESP and College Day and the game day, but we got to get to the actual game. What are some things OU football fans should be looking for this Saturday? Well, do you remember the saying, distance makes the heart grow fonder? Well, coming up, the injured list has been putting OU football fans' hearts in overtime this season. We'll get some relief and info on who's in or out up next. Hello, I'm Darby McCormick and it's time for sports. One thing that just means more to Sooner fans now that OU is in the SEC is the weekly football injury report. The first SEC injury report revealed a possible season debut for a very missed player. Wide receiver Nick Anderson is probable to begin to build off of his 10 touchdown season in 2023. But out of the 12 players listed, two thirds are either doubtful or out entirely, which is rocky for the Sooners going into Rocky Top weekend. When guys aren't practicing, it's hard to play winning football unless you have this depth of experience. And there's a few of those guys that uh, you mentioned that do have experience, not as much here. Some of them do here, some of them aren't. And so that plays a part. And, and you just kind of adjust every situation on its own. OU soccer is kicking off the first ever SEC competition in any sport for the university by playing Mississippi State tonight at 7. This match will include OU softball head coach Patty Gasso doing the coin toss, a Pride of Oklahoma halftime performance, and postgame fireworks. The Sooners receive U.S. soccer coaches poll votes for consecutive weeks, making it the first time since 2019. And OU volleyball will wrap up non-conference play this weekend at the K-State Invitational and look to extend their five-match win streak. Not to mention, this Friday, head coach Aaron Mansfield will face his alma mater, UCSB. After that, he'll take on his older brother, Jason, K-State's head coach, on Sunday. And it's always jam-packed in the fall when it comes to watching sports, but OU Baseball is adding more to Sooner fans' schedules. There will be four competitions in Eldale Mitchell Park. All will be free admission. And today we had, you guessed it, another schedule release. This time it's non-conference matchups for basketball. The schedule features seven home games at the Lloyd Noble Center, the return of the student-only game at McCaslin Fieldhouse, and a Bedlam non-conference matchup at the Paycom Center in OKC. Conference play kicks off for the Sooners at Alabama on January 4th. And while you plan out your future Sooner sports schedule, plan your night tonight around watching one Sooner star in NFL Thursday night football. Patriots running back Ramondre Stevenson will take on Aaron Rodgers and the Jets tonight at 715. Brooke, Abigail. Thanks, Darby. Coming up, this isn't a Dutton Ranch story, but you'll never believe how this cat cowboyed home. Find out the trip he took to get back home to his owners when we return. I'm Madison Dealey with an update from Norman Police. The department says there will be more law enforcement at the schools in the district following reported threats. Norman Police say there's no immediate safety concerns but are taking extra precautions. Police encourage anyone with information related to a threat to report it immediately. Abigail, Brooke, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Madison. A cat named Rainbow found his way home after going missing on a family trip at Yellowstone National Park. This isn't a short trip either. Rainbow traveled 800 miles in two months to get back to his owners. The owners spent days looking for their beloved cat, even recruiting park rangers on the search. They say cats have nine lives, and I think Rainbow used to have a few on that journey. Well, Scotty, what are we expecting for this weather? We have one last look at game day. Whew, yeah, for game day forecast, we've got a hot day on game day. It's going to be 96 degrees at tailgate time. It's going to be 93 at kickoff and 89 at halftime. So really going to be a hot one, especially early on in the day for that game day show. So make sure to have lots of water packed and it's going to be cooling off after that as we go into next week. All right, it looks like it's going to be a great forecast for our game day again. All right, Darby, we've been talking about this a couple of times. I want to know where you're going to be either tomorrow night or game day morning because I've heard a lot of students are planning to camp out for this game. Ooh. Oh, I wish I could, but I'll be, I'll be camping in spirit. 
Okay, I gotta well, get my beauty rest. Alrighty, <laughs> thanks for watching everyone.